question for those who didn't hear. We discussed yesterday the, uh, the uh, instant of the night of the jinn when the Prophet ﷺ went and gave da'wah to the jinn. Our brother is asking how could the companion have seen the jinn if, the, if human beings cannot see the jinn. That is the origin, no doubt, as it relates to the jinn. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ That verily he sees you, him and his tribe, yani shaytan, him and his yani tribe, they see you from where you see them not. Uh, and so the origin, na'am, is that the jinn are not seen. But uh, there are instances where they may be visible and are visible. To human beings and an instance of that took place at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu that the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam had left Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu and in charge of some of the spoils of war and food stuff some of the charity uh, and a man came or Abu Huraira he found a man foraging among the food and taking from the food and so he gripped grasped him took him gripped him Snatch him <laughs> and said, What are you doing? He said, Oh, please, you know, I have a yal, I have um, a poor man, and I have a family, and I have, uh, yeah, and we're suffering, and so we just, we just need something to eat. And so he let him take the food and let him go. He said, but Just don't come back. The following night, he found him, same man, foraging among the food, and so he seized him again. And he said, but I caught you yesterday and you said you wouldn't come back. He said, I know what, you know, family's hungry, family's suffering, uh, and I'm a poor man. And so, the mercy of Abu Huraira, uh, he let him go. After the first night, uh, the Prophet Sallam, he said, what happened to your captive last night? And so he informed the messenger of what occurred. He said that indeed he will return. And just as the Prophet Sallam mentioned, he returned. Then on the third night, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu caught him again. And when he caught him on the third night, he said, I'm definitely taking you, taking you to the Messenger of Allah. And so he said, no, 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 please, don't take me to the Messenger of Allah, and I'll teach you something greatly beneficial to you. He said, if, when you take up your place of sleep at night, if you recite Ayatul Kursi, then Allah Azza will send down a protector who will guard you until the morning. And so he let him go. And so Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, the following day he informed the messenger of what he said. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, do you know who that was? Indeed it was the shaitan. And the Prophet sallallahu he mentioned as occurs in a narration and a version, sadaqaka wa huwa kadhub. That he was truthful to you even though he's a liar. And so in this narration we see clearly that the Prophet Sallam uh, or Afran Abu Huraira saw Shaytan on three consecutive occasions. And there are a number of narrations uh, wherein the companions saw the jinn. The one of the companions had a, had, the, had a pantry that he noticed every night there was food deplete, yani depleting from this pantry of food and from this store of food, a cupboard. And so, yani it was confusing him what was taking place. And so he decided to take up residence that night within the pantry. He said, so he stayed within the pantry and in the middle of the night, he saw what resembled smoke coming through the keyhole of the door and then that smoke assembled itself as a man or as what resembled or looked like a man who began to indulge in the food. <laughs> and so the companion grabbed the man or grabbed him. Of course, if it was one of us, <laughs> You'd be looking for your key. <laughs> Look, should go to the back door. <laughs> Listen to somebody inside there, you know, I don't know what to do. But, but 
<laughs> but the companion grabbed him and said, you, you are weak. <laughs> because he, he found him to be skinny and slender. And he said, Verily, I am from the stronger of our people. Uh, and so he uh, commanded him not to return. He promised that he would not return. Uh, and so he left. And the jinn left. And he informed the Messenger of Allah the following day uh, of what had taken place. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed him of the fact that it was, this is other than the incident with Abu Huraira. And so the narrator of the hadith, he said, who was that companion? Was it Umar? And so he said, Faman. He said, was it Umar? He said, who else? <laughs> so there were instances among the companions of them seeing shayateen, of them witnessing and observing shayateen. And up until this very day, it is something that is observed and it's something that is seen, that people observe and see uh, the jinn uh, on, in certain instances. Sometimes, sometimes uh, there is a pattern of people being affected by, by jinn, seeing the jinn. That the individual, when he himself or she is affected by a jinn, sometimes they may observe the jinn themselves. Uh, and on other occasions, there has been occasions where uh, a number of people have seen a jinn uh, as occurs in one of the, I remember a conference many, many years ago in the early 90s that would take place in a masjid that we are far from now and we have no connection to any longer. Uh, but many of the brothers stayed the night in the masjid for the conference. We traveled from Birmingham to London. This was, I believe, 90 two perhaps from Birmingham to London and many of the brothers took up residence in the masjid and in the middle of the night a number of brothers saw a short dark figure walk from one end of the masjid across the brothers who were asleep within the masjid and brothers there were a few brothers awake and they observed this short dark figure walk across the bodies in the masjid and exit. Uh, and this was something that was understood and known uh, by even among our mashaykh. Yani there were those from among the mashaykh who knew that the jinn uh, were present or would attend uh, some of their gatherings. Sheikh Muqbil, he used to give a dars solely for the jinn. And he would command all humans to leave. <laughs> And they would empty the masjid and Sheikh Muqbil would address the, what was apparently an empty masjid. But Sheikh Muqbil knew that among uh, those who were present were the jinn who had come from among the Salafi Yun. Since among the jinn there are believing jinn and among the jinn there are Salafi jinn. Just as we have kuffar among them and Christians and Jews among them. And there is an instance and we'll round up with this. There is a story that took place during the life and it is mentioned in the life and the biography of Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Ibaz. Samahatul Walid, Sheikh Abdul Aziz, when he was the dean of the Islamic University, that there was a, an instance that took place within one of the dorms of the Jami'an of the university, that the dorm, so anybody who's ever uh, studied in the Jami'an or has lived in the Jami'an, you'll know that you'll have a room and the room is split into three sections usually and shared by three students. So you'll, you'll make a partition with a curtain or with a bed sheet. Uh, and then the second part of the room would be uh, partitioned off. And each of those three sections, and it would be lived in by the students. And it's different now. They have plush, yani, plush rooms and marble. <laughs> marble staircases now in the jam and i went to the jam here recently and visited uh uh my son hakim who was present there uh at present when he was living on the campus well it's like hotel well i couldn't stop laughing Ni'mah for them but nothing like the state that we when we were students in the islamic university nothing like the state that we went to in any case 
there was always a problem for a man who his section is by the door because the coming and going always takes place by his section particularly in Medina Medina Ikhwan when cold hits Medina when winter hits Medina it is extremely cold and it's cold as England and so uh, what would happen people would come and go and leave the door open and so one of the students asked the one that was closest to the door to close the door he said rather than getting up he observed a hand extend from where the, where the brother was sitting to the door and closed the door and went back of course everybody who's, who was present was filled with fear he thought that nobody could see it but the rest of the, those who were in the room they were filled with fear and so those who were present within the room they went to visit Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Abbas to inform him of what had taken place that we saw this such and such took place and the man's hand it, it extended to the door Ya Sheikh Wallahi yani we saw it with our eyes it wasn't figment of our imagination and so on and so they convinced Sheikh Abdul Aziz that something was going on with his student they had already observed and suspected something a bit weird and strange but this just yani, was the icing on the cake Sheikh Abdul Aziz therefore he called him to, the, to his office and he addressed him Sheikh Abdul Aziz he spoke to him directly and he spoke to him straight and said just tell me directly and be honest are you a jinn? and so he responded by saying no nah. and he said that there are many from among our brothers who wish to study here and who wish to come here and the only thing that I desire oh Sheikh is to remain and study and I'm not going to bother anybody or harm anybody I just want to study and so Sheikh Abdul Aziz he permitted he said I will permit you to remain as long as you remain in the form that you are in now and then you don't shape shift <laughs> I don't change your form I permit you to remain as long as you are in the form that you are in right now yeah, and in human form uh, and that is something that is mentioned in the biography of Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Abbas and more than one of, the, of those who have written and collected his biography so this, the short answer to the question is yes we can see the chief so we'll round up on that note then ayyuh al-ikhwa wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina muhammad wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen